Welcome back to HDTV Health District Television. At the beginning of the year, the Health District put a new program in place aimed at preventing foodborne illness. Jennifer Sizemore, Public Information Manager for the Southern Nevada Health District, takes a closer look at this focus on safe food handling. Thanks, Brian. In previous shows, we featured how food establishment inspectors from our Environmental Health Division inspect, report, and educate commercial facilities handling food anywhere in Clark County. In 2012, about 40 inspectors oversaw 21,000 permits, conducted 24,000 inspections, 6,500 surveys, 1,700 complaint investigations, and nearly 8,500 special event and sampling booth venues. From 2010 to now, the staff has also overseen the adoption of food codes in compliance with the Federal Food and Drug Administration and Centers for Disease Control, and the launch of online food handler training. These changes and the new regulations involved required a tremendous effort in the training of the food handling industry. Unfortunately, in, in 2012, we were seeing an increase in, in downgrades and closures, which of course was of concern to us and to industry. So we thought we needed a different approach as far as education and then enforcement with these um, uh, more extensive uh, regulations. The different approach Rose mentioned was to create the Think Risk Initiative in 2013, focusing on preventing foodborne illness by drilling down on the five most critical foodborne risk factors identified by the FDA and the CDC. The Think Risk Initiative is so critical at, at this point in time because when someone picks up a set of regulations and they see a 185 page, it can be a daunting task. So what we're finding in those is what the FDA and the CDC have found is that the majority of foodborne illness is caused by one of those five foodborne illness risk factors. That's why we're trying to get it very clear cut that if you control these risk factors in whatever process you're doing, then you're going to have a safe food operation. As a way to make the focus clear cut, the food inspection forms and system of demerits were streamlined and intensified to enable operators to focus on preventing immediate health risks. Beginning in January of this year, all facility workers are being educated on the changes and given the tools to implement them. One of the components of, of our initiative for this year is that those food facilities that have the potential for all five of those foodborne illness risk factors, when we go in at that first inspection of the year, if they were to incur a B or C grade, they are being offered as, as part of this educational uh, uh, reinforcement of having a safe food business is that we're doing a one-time risk assessment audit in that everything which would be looked at with regard to those five foodborne illness risk factors and how the health inspection report would be written is reviewed with the operator. We do require at that time if there's any critical violations that they are corrected at the time of the inspection to assure the public safety and health. However, we don't hang, hang the B or C card on that day. We do explain to them that we will be in to do an unannounced inspection uh, within 15 to 30 days after that audit has been performed and that we do expect them to get control of their risk factors for foodborne illness during that time frame. Well, when you look at the code itself, um, the code is, is, you know, when you read what's in the code, you can interpret it different from me. So what I try to do in the kitchens is look at what is the hazard and what is the best way you know, to prevent or eliminate that hazard. So if we're looking at it like that, then I'm always a step ahead of my inspector when she comes in. Um, and that's how I try to, you know, train the trainers is key here, where the chefs and managers are just as smart as me because I can't be everywhere. And as long as they take on that attitude and they're, you know, our food director says protect the A. And that's what we've, you know, really tried to do um, here. Perhaps the single most critical change in focus can best be described as educating the food establishments to be more proactive as they assess the potential risk factors in their establishments. For someone to act ethically in anything, they need to know the difference between the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do. So first of all, it starts with knowledge. We want to instill that knowledge through the Think Risk Initiative and then also 
discuss with the operator what their challenges are and how to overcome those challenges so when we leave, they're doing the right thing. Here we, we train twice a year, whether it's allergen uh, training or food safety training. So I think what's important is when you have um, ugly pictures. So when I do my training, I always show them the consequences of our failure to um, do the right thing. Implementing the Think Risk Initiative boils down to education and cooperation between food facilities and the health district. A facility needs to have a knowledgeable person in charge that is observing staff every day because whether it's the turnover in staff, all the other challenges which happen on a day-to-day -day, dealing with their patrons, dealing with uh, whatever breaks that day inside of the kitchen, they have to keep that focus on those five foodborne illness risk factors. Their relationship with us is important, not, and I think they've tried to change from trying to be the regulator slash bad guy to, okay, we're in this together. We want to help them prepare every way we can. We want to help them study. We want to help them implement. But then, due to our responsibility to the public to evaluate food establishments at least once a year, and more often as necessary to assure compliance, when the inspector goes in to inspect, that is test time, that's when they have to evaluate. We want to have it where the operator already feels empowered with the knowledge to do the right thing. And that's a win-win for the health department, for industry, and for the public. When the regulations were implemented in 2010, we started to build out on the Southern Nevada Health District website what's called a Food Establishment Resource Library. It takes the information in the regulations and breaks it down into subject areas. It's true no one likes to read regulations, but if food industry professionals have a particular question when it comes to a certain food safety issue, they now have user-friendly handouts, logs, fact sheets, frequently asked questions on the Food Establishment Resource Library. They can utilize these tools to be more successful in both training their employees and monitoring the food processes in their establishments. But until 2010, when the R code changed and the health department actually came out and took the time to go through the changes in the code and, and really paint a picture for us as to where they wanted to go. Um, and then it was for us as operators to take that back and, and use it. So keep in mind, they gave us everything that we needed. So here when we do training, I use ServeSafe because I am a ServeSafe instructor as well. I use that as my base for training, covering all of the FDA guidelines as well. And then I think when you think attitude-wise, it has to start with me. If I don't care, then that means that my worker isn't going to care. So clearly here, they know I'm in the game, and I, I try to, again, painting the what-if question to the worker, I think, changes their attitude, which gives them that, that attitude and, and the commitment. If I don't stay on top of things, you know, training, mock inspections, always on the floor, always finding and fixing, then I think it, it boils back down to attitude. If they don't see me, or if the room chefs aren't active in making sure that everything is running right, then the worker takes on that, well, pfft, he doesn't care, so why should I? Preventing foodborne illnesses from commercial facilities requires both operators and inspectors who care. Education, training, regulations, and accountability are all vital, yes, but overall there must be a cooperative effort to work together to protect the public. I think they're a, a great tool for us, um, but the relationships that we build, um, you know, when I change out and get a new health inspector, the one thing I hope that they bring to the table, you know, is, is you know, when you talk about being standard, I, I don't want the next inspector to come in and, you know, do things totally opposite from my inspector now. So as far as the health department, I think they need to be standardized in a way where the five risk areas, everybody is looking at those risk areas the same. We have a very dynamic food service industry. We have a very culturally diverse food service industry. We have to look to all of the challenges, not just with old operators, but with brand new operators. Operators coming from different parts of the country and different parts of the world. We have to overcome the challenges and we have to meet each challenge um, when they do come and never give up. We need to always focus on those food safety um, risk factors and um, help industry to serve safe food within our community. There are 48 million people in the United States who get food poisoning each year. 48 million. 
As a result, more than 128,000 people are hospitalized and as many as 3,000 die. The CDC has identified the top five factors contributing to foodborne illness as improper hot-cold holding temperatures of potentially hazardous foods, improper cooking temperatures, contaminated utensils and equipment, poor employee health and hygiene, and food from unsafe sources. And Brian, home cooks need to practice safe food handling in their own kitchens. 70% of foodborne illnesses are caused by food consumed at home and not from restaurants. Food safety is food safety, and all of the information available to the industry professionals, including the Food Establishment Resource Library, is easily available to everyone on our website at snhd.info. Food for thought, Jennifer, thank you.